great you came back for part two of the satanic panic this rabbit hole that i found in my comment section and i'm glad i was caught of god you know i never read something first i only press record when i'm going to read something now i've put my okay cancel save now i can start from the beginning but i will definitely defin definitively start with some comments that i never got to last time from terry joyce on not my rabbit hole commenting on a video i made with the butterfly singing love is like a butterfly so terry says and i'm honored by this it would be fun if you sang mine hair from cabaret maybe we should and uh, then i can go record a song with me singing it haha uh -huh, that would be fun that would be so much fun actually i wish to do it with you anytime and then book of revelations again this is like three months ago two months ago enough money and we can hire them all to put on such a production great entertainment to pass time and that's i was talking about something about the blueprint of the serpent so let's get back to the satanic panic we were talking about Reagan and the years as a result of anxiety about the pro uh, protecting the nuclear family then um, there was the Halloween candy killer Ronald Clark O'Brien received a highly publicized execution in 1984 and remember so you, in every state you can make a law if you can kill your criminals your serial killers and some states they actually do kill their prisoners the evangelical movement wasn't alone in its growing occult obsession and fear-mongering the media too played the outsize and this is the important thing about this it's we're learning about the media and it's it's affect was it effect in 1988 Geraldo's Rivera's lurid documentary devil worship exposing Satan's underground became the highest rated televised televised documentary to air up to that point in 1991 2020 episode famously and for many viewers terrifyingly not Terry terrifyingly aired an official roman catholic exorcism evangelical documentaries like hell's bells attempted to tie rock music to the occult while christian fantasy like that of the book selling author best selling book author frank peretti to the occult while christian fantasy like that of best-selling Frank Peretti transformed real-world social issues into matters of angelic and demonic warfare with so much parallel emphasis on fearing strangers in your neighborhood and Satan in your home a collision of the two was pr practically inevitable how the imagined threat of satanic ritual abuse became established in 1980 a since discredited memoir called Michelle remembers became the scandalous bestseller based on its purported detailed of detailing of childhood spent undergoing a wealth of shocking occult sexual abuse its co-authors were controversial psychologists Lawrence Pazda and his wife Michelle Smith a former patient who's whom Pazda claimed to have regressed into childhood through hypnosis Pazda reportedly helped Smith uncover memories of past abuse 
at the hands of the members of the church of Satan, which Pazda insisted was older than Levay's group of se for, by several centuries. Almost from the moment of Michel Remembers publication, it claims the allegations were repeatedly and thoroughly debunked. However, thanks to widespread and credulous media attention, Pazda and Smith were able to double down on their story, and Pazda became seen as an expert in the area of, in the arena of what would come to be called Satanic Ritual Abuse, SRA. Despite the wild implausibility and unverifiable foundation of its stories of grisly abuse and sex orgies, Michelle remembers was the presented was presented as a textbook during the 80s and the early 90s for legal professionals and other authorities. It also spawned numerous copycat memoirs like in 1988 Satan's Underground, which was also shown to be false and which embellished the mainstream and the idea of the massive intergenerational clandestine cult founded on satanic ritual abuse, one that could be occurring in your very own neighborhood. At that time, the devil worshippers could be anywhere. Writer Peter Ber Berbergal told io9, in summing up the zeitgeist, they could be your next door neighbor, they could be your child's caregiver. The false narrative of Michelle remembers would directly impact the nation for over a decade. Its dark occult fantasies helped the to spark the rash of wildly dramatic, dramatic, highly unfounded accusations of satanic ritual abuse that were attached to the string of daycare centers throughout the 1980s. The belief that daycare owners across the country were visiting dark occult acts of child abuse upon their young charges upon their young charges was the most prominent part of the border of the broader daycare sex abuse mass panic which was itself part of the 1980s much broader wave of fear this fear would ravage communities lead to two of the most notorious criminal trials in the u.s history and ruin multiple lives before it finally subsided. And some of its victims are still serving sentences today. The repercussions, this is read from Vox, Vox.com. The repercussions of the criminal pro prosecution of satanic ritual abuse are still being felt today. The earliest of the wave of satanic ritual abuse cases began in Kern County, California, 1980. In Bakersfield, social workers who had read, Michelle remembers, learned of the clandestine local occult sex ring from two children who'd been coerced into fabricating the claims by a relative. Between 1984 and 1986, the investigation into the labyrinth claims, these labyrinth claims, would send at least 26 people to jail in interrelated convictions, despite the complete lack of corroborative physical evidence for any of the claims nearly all of these those convictions have since been overturned including that of one man who served 20 years for a 40 year sentence and those of two parents who were sentenced to 240 years in prison after their 
own sons were coached to accuse them of abuse. This template, the spiraling investigation, wild claims, no evidence, would remain consistent for more than a decade throughout the subsequent wave of failed prosecutions of satanic ritual abuse in daycares and schools across the US. Among them was the disastrous McMartin trial, which became the remains of law and and remains the largest, longest, and most e expensive trial in California, Californian history. In 1983, one parent accused one of the staff members at the McMartin preschool in Manhattan Beach, California, of abuse. During the investigation, police allowed an unlicensed psychotherapist named Key McFarlane to conduct examinations of 400 children who attended the daycare. McFarlane famously used automatically correct dolls and coerced interview processes, resulting in a staggering of 320 counts of child abuse being leveled against seven day care staff members by 41 children. The eyebrow raising claims included allegations that daycare owners had built secret underground tunnels that led to the ritual ceremonies, had ritually sacrificed a baby, flushed children down toilets, and could turn into witches and fly. D Side note. That does happen here, or so I've been told. Witches fly on brooms, and babies are found, but babies are found chopped up. Don't know why, but they are. Little black children found in toilets. After six years of investigation and litigation in a five year trial, the case ultimately essentially evaporated due to a lack of evidence. One by one, all charges against daycare staffers were dropped. The McMartin Preschool building was raised in 1990. By the mid-80s, a wave of seminars, tutorials and educational videos for authorities and evangelicals on the subject of recognizing the fighting satanic cults was sweeping the U.S law enforcement and in El Paso, Texas, we were promptly, promptly dispatched to ritual crime seminars. Journalist Debbie Nathan recounted in 2003, these were classes aimed at law enforcement authorities and taught mostly by other cops, therapists, preachers, and by born again Christians claiming to be former high priests who escape or escapees from unspeakable sadistic ritual torture cults. In 1992, the Justice Department thoroughly debunked the myth of the satanic ritual abuse cult. But though accusations of satanically motivated child abuse rituals had pretty much died out by the mid-90s, Law enforcement continued to treat Satan as a potential criminal indicator. As we see in this, in 1994, the police training video, the Law Enforcement Guide to Satanic Cults. And I'll put the, the link below. I haven't watched it yet. It's seven minutes long. There's two different communities that use this part. Uh, one is the... Uh, pagan and occultic community, and the other community is, of course, the homosexual community. Homosexuals. Today this video seems laughable, but the humor fades when we consider just how many real people were pers persecuted due to these brazen stereotypes about devil worship. Indeed, the most damaging misconception about the fallout of satanic panic is that 
It ended in the 1990s. In fact, although most satanic ritual abuse cases eventually resulted in overturned convictions, at least three people are still serving prison sentences for crimes that most likely never happened. In 1994, Cuban immigrant Frank Fuster was accused, along with his undocumented wife, of molesting eight children. Fuster was sentenced to six consecutive life terms, or a minimum of 165 years in prison. As of 2021, he, was being, he has been imprisoned for over 35 years and will not be eligible for parole until 2134. Two, 2,134, the year. He reportedly has no legal representation. As appalling as Fuster's sentence is, he's not alone. North Carolina inmate Patrick Figger is uh, age 72, still serving time for a 1992 conviction due to coerced allegations of re realist ritualistic abuse. And Joseph Allen, age 63, it's about your age, ladies. 